So we're back yet again with another update to the Rock M installation on Linux. It's great that AMD has been focusing on improving their software support for AI and machine learning tools, but they also keep on changing the installation process, which might be confusing for some people. But no worries, I'm here to clear things up and show how to do it for people who might not be so experienced with Linux. I'll also be going over how to run stable diffusion and YOLO object detection, even though I already went over these things in a previous video, just to make sure everything's crystal clear. The link to my written guide, which you see here, is in the video description, so you can easily copy and paste these commands. But before we start, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. If you're looking for a premium cloud gaming experience at an affordable price, then check out Maximum Settings. They offer bare metal systems that pack the latest hardware for maximum performance at up to 4K resolution and 120 FPS. These systems are also loaded with Linux Mint, so if you've used the Steam Deck then you should feel right at home here. Linux gaming has come a long way and is finally ready for the mainstream. So head on over to Maximum Settings and try it out. The link is in the video description. And yes, this guide will work on their systems, so you can utilize that RX 7900 XTX and its 24 gigs of memory for more than just games. In fact, this guide should work for any RDNA series card, and that includes RDNA 1, 2, and 3. Personally, I'll be doing this on a 6700 XT today. Older GPUs will likely need to follow different steps, so I included a link to a Reddit thread here that should be helpful if you own an older card. Now, I'll also be doing this on an Ubuntu-based distro, but I'll also point out how to install this on an Arch-based distro as well. If you're using a different distro, then I left the link here to the official instructions from AMD, so you can go ahead and follow that if you have a different distro. And I actually copied these instructions directly from this link. All right, so let's get started. And you probably could copy and paste all of these lines, but I, I'm just gonna do it one line at a time. So let's start with this one. And I also noticed that this uh, will probably have different output this specific line will look different if you're running Linux Mint. I'm actually not sure if this line is even required, but it's in the instructions, so it doesn't hurt either way. So next, let's copy and paste this. And now we'll download the package. And by the way, so this will download this file here. And you can just go ahead and delete this after the installation is done. Um, all right, so now let's install that. And again, if you see this little warning here, just ignore that. Okay, now let's sudo apt update. Now this installs the, I believe this is a kernel level driver. And this will take a minute to finish. All right, that's done now. So now we can install the rockm packages. And these will take a while, 25 gigs to download. So yeah, this is gonna take a few minutes. All right, so that's all finished now. Um, so, Installing those packages on an Arch distro is a lot easier. All you need to do is install the OpenCL-AMD package, like you see here. And after that, just enable the user permissions like we just did in Ubuntu. All right, so that covers Arch distros. So now let's continue on with the rest of the guide. So if you're using certain GPUs, you're going to need to do this step. Um, but if you're running a professional card or an RDNA 2 GPU with 16 gigs of RAM or an RDNA 3 GPU, such as the 7900 XTX, 
then this is not necessary to do this step. But since I'm running a 6700 XT, it is required. So just edit this file and we'll paste this line into it. Okay, then press Control X and Y to save. All right, so next we'll need to restart the computer before continuing. So I'll go ahead and do that now. All right, so we're back. And to verify that the installation was successful, let's run this command, rockm info, and you should see output similar to this. If not, then something went wrong and you'll need to go back and make sure it was installed. So now we can move on to installing PyTorch, which is required for a lot of the Python-based machine learning models. So let's go ahead and first install these prerequisites and first do sudo apt update as always before installing any system packages. And now we can paste this line and this will go ahead and install our required packages. Okay, so next we're going to create a Python virtual environment uh, before installing the PyTorch packages. Now it's important to remember which directory you're in when you're setting up the virtual environment because it'll create a folder and every time you want to run a app using these packages, you'll need to activate this environment. So this line here will create the virtual environment. And you'll see here, this is the VNV folder we just created. So now to activate it, we just need to run this line. And every time you close the terminal, um, you'll need to run this again. So see how we have this VNV uh, line here? This tells us we're in the virtual environment. So again, if you were to restart your computer or close this terminal, you'll need to reactivate this if you want to use the PyTorch packages. All right, so now we can install them with pip. And this might take a few minutes to download. Okay, that's all finished now. So now let's verify that PyTorch it was installed correctly and has GPU support. So enter Python 3, then copy and paste these two lines. Push enter, and if it returns true, then that means that PyTorch has access to the GPU. So we're all good to go. Type exit and parentheses to get out of there. So now let's try a real application. Let's start with Stable Diffusion Web UI. Now, this package will improve performance, but it's not required. But let's go ahead and install it. Okay, so now let's download the Web UI app. And the second line will change directory into it. So now we're in that directory. And to run it, all you need to do is run this command. And this will take a minute to start. And this will also download a model by default, but it's not the newest model. I think it's a uh, version 1.5. So I'll go ahead and show how to install a newer version also. So huggingface.co has all the AI models you can think of, not just stable diffusion. But if you wanted to find a different stable diffusion model, you know, some of them are more specialized for certain purposes more than others. And some are just newer and better. So you can see here a, a few popular examples, but I also included a link here to download version 2.1. So let's go ahead and download that too. This is gonna take a few minutes also. It's 4.9 gigabyte download. 
you can see here this is also downloading the, like I said, version 1.5, which is older. So we'll go ahead and wait till both of these are done downloading. Alright, so both of the models have finished downloading, and you can see the web UI has popped up here. If this doesn't automatically pop up, then you can access it at this address here. Now, in order to import the downloaded model, the version 2.1, we'll need to copy it to the right directory. So enter the Stable Diffusion Web UI folder, go to Models, then go to Stable Diffusion. You can see version 1.5 is already there. And for all the other models you download, just go ahead and move them into that folder. All right, so now go to the web UI and click refresh. And we'll see both of the models are here. So let's start with the older one. And using this is easy enough, just enter your prompt. Um, let's do something, uh, let's, see if the AI is self-aware. Let's see what it, how it reacts to the stable diffusion prompt. And the first time you run it might take a little longer, but all the following runs will be faster. And, and yeah, hmm. That's an interesting take. <laughs> uh, let's see smiley face. So yeah, that that's pretty good output. Um, again, this is the older model. So the newer one, version 2.1, should be better. And this isn't even the best one. Um, there's, I think there's much better models than even this one. But... This is a straightforward example. Now, in order for it to work with version 2.1, you'll need to go to settings and go to stable diffusion and check this box here, upcast cross attention layer to float 32. Then go up to apply settings. And you can see some weird output here. Let's go ahead and click reload UI. That was normal, by the way. Okay, so now let's enter our prompt. Let's see if this one is any better at identifying itself, so to speak. Let's see if it's self-aware. Oh, that's a pretty interesting image. Anyway, so yeah, the point is that it's working and it's running on the GPU. And we know it is because it only takes a second or two to generate. All right, so now let's move on to the next example, yellow object detection. So for this one, you're going to need a webcam. Or, I mean, you could use it with a downloaded video file, but it's more fun with a webcam. To exit the Stable Diffusion web UI, just go to the terminal here and press Ctrl-C and that'll kill it. All right, so now I'm gonna go back a directory. Um, this got us out of the stable diffusion directory and back into downloads. So now I'll paste those three lines for YOLO. This will download it, put us in the directory, and then install the requirements. And again, make sure you're in your virtual environment before um, running the line uh, to install the requirements. Okay, so that's all done. Now all we need to do is run this line, and if you have more than one webcam connected, then you'll change the source. Um, it could be any, you know, zero, one, two, so on. But since I only have one webcam, it is source zero. And again, this might take. A little longer to start the first time, but hey, there we are. All right. So as you can see, it's working. And yeah, we're getting great performance and it's running on the GPU. So to exit, again, just go to the terminal here and press Control-C.
Alright, so that wraps up today's video. Hopefully AMD doesn't change the installation process again, since this is the third video I've done on this already. But if you appreciate these videos, then I'd appreciate if you could hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, if you're interested in doing a project that takes advantage of YOLO object detection, then be sure to check out the playlist for my DIY smart security camera Python project. I'm planning to do another video on that project soon, so stay tuned. But anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.